For the next section, I'm going to set up basic player movement and get the enemies spawning out of the, the doors. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is open up the player and I'm going to create a new update event. Uh, as I did with um, my player and my spaceship, I'm just going to use if functions to get the, the, you know, the, the player moving in a, in a couple of different directions. Uh, so that's going to be combined with a user input. So if left is down, I'm going to alter the actor and I'm going to do that with a, a motion-based event, uh, sorry, motion-based uh, effect. And I'm going to alter the X speed and I'm going to set it to negative 20. Uh, what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to use an if function for this tutorial. So otherwise if right is down, I'm going to set the x speed to 20. Um, now if you'll remember uh, it's alt. If you hold down alt you can create multiple uh, Multiple of these from you know create a copy of, of of you know the section of code instantly uh, with just holding Alt and clicking and dragging. Uh, so I'm going to set this to up. And I'm going to set this to down. Uh, let me think. Uh, that'll be negative twenty, and this will be twenty. Now the reason I've done it in this format is. Because if you'll remember in previous videos, we've had it that uh, when for each of these, you'll have to create a release section of code to, to accompany, you know, so when left is down, left is released. Uh, this way, uh, you literally, in any other situation where left, left is, is down and uh, right is down, so, well, in any situation where there isn't a key pushed, it's going to set the X and Y speed to zero for our player. Um, whilst if there's any of these situations that play out, it'll you know change the X and Y speed accordingly. So if we test this, our player should move in a variety of different directions um, with a little less code than we would have needed if we'd... Uh, used our original method of just using lots and lots of ifs on their own. Um, in standard code this is known as a you know an else if rather than an otherwise if. Uh, or you know a, a, just an else on its own. So with this Whoa <laughs> that's because it's rotational and now he's been bumped you know he's bumped into something. So, so you can see from this, I'm able to move in a variety of ways. It's just that the uh, I just need to get the uh, collision set up correctly for, for you know uh, which way the character is going to face. We'll do that in a, in a in an upcoming video. So uh, the next thing I'm going to cover is getting the doors to spawn an enemy. So I'm going to click on the door. And what I'm going to do is I've got this, this animation. As I mentioned in the previous video, it's a, a looping based animation. So a non-looping a non animation. Uh, and what I'm going to do is in, in the events, I'm going to make it spawn an enemy after a certain amount of time. Now, rather than an update event where there would be hundreds and hundreds of enemies spawning every millisecond, what I'm going to do is a when created event. So, when created, I'm going to check something every, let's say, every three seconds. Uh, and that is going to be first me creating a private attribute. That private attribute is going to be a number, and that's going to be door active. 
And with this, I'm going to set this number to a random number between 1 and 3, every 3 seconds. Now, in two out of the three situations, nothing's going to happen. So, you know, it'll the door will remain closed. But in the scenario that it is true, so if door active equals one, uh, then it'll it'll open and it'll release an enemy. Uh, let me just see where that would be. So it'll be under draw. And we're going to make the door open. And the way we're going to do that is by setting the frame back to zero. The one thing that we also need to remember is that the doors will kind of appear to open and close when the level begins. So we want to set it automatically to go to frame seven when the level starts. Uh, so what it's going to do is if the, when the level begins, it's going to set it to frame seven, which is this one. And then every three seconds, it's going to set the door active, uh, set, set the attribute door active to a random number between one and three. And if this you know attribute door active equals one, we're going to switch it to frame zero, and then it's going to play through that animation once. Now, what we need to do at this point is count one, two, three, four. So at, at this frame here, we're going to create our enemy. We're going to make our enemy appear. Uh, on the screen, but it's a very, very, you know, you know, uh, you know, appear just at that moment that the doors open its furthest. So, what I'm going to do is go to flow, time, and after. Point uh, four seconds. I'm going to create. The reason point four is because that's four hundred milliseconds. I believe so anyway. Uh, I'm going to create my actor type. An actor type is going to be my enemy. And the place I'm going to create, create that will be the x of self and the y of self. Whoa. Make sure to change that from x to y. Uh, otherwise, you'll, you'll end up with your, your character, you know, uh, your enemy spawning somewhere random in the level. Now, the, th the thing that we'll have to consider with this is, uh, obviously, based on the position of the door, we're going to have to change these two numbers here. Because uh, if you remember, uh, when you look at your door, it always spawns in the top left-hand corner, set to the X and the Y position. So, for example, when the door is facing this way, it'll still be fine because it'll be creating it here. But what happens when our enemy needs to be created up here? For that, we'll deduct, let's say, you know, thirty-two off either the x or the y position. We shall we'll get to, to that in you know a, an upcoming video. Uh, but for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my enemy to spawn, and just I'm just going to. This won't be the final code that we use, but it's just to get it moving forwards. Uh, if you can get the basics flashed out, you know, uh, when you're building your game, uh, just so you can roughly simulate stuff, that always helps quite a bit in development. So that looks like it should all work nice and good. And the the great thing is as well is the reason we've made this a private attribute is that it will only trigger if it's true for that particular door. So you might end up with a situation where all three doors open simultaneously. You might end up with a situation where none of them open, or you might have mix and mix and matches. Uh, so let's just quickly test that. Uh, once we've looked at this, uh, well, I think well what we'll do is we'll wrap this video up for now. Uh, and then in the next video I'll cover uh, directional shooting uh, and enemy movement. And it'll, it's a similar-ish... Uh, okay, we go, look, there you go. <laughs> so it's 
So you can see that it it's randomly spawning them. Uh, so in that one, in that situation, it was spawning no enemies out of the doors. So it makes kind of gameplay a little bit unpredictable, uh, especially when you've got an absolute ton of doors uh, opening from all sides. Uh, so yeah, that uh, we'll wrap the video up here, and uh, in the next video we'll cover a bunch more stuff.